Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and today we are continuing up the Japanese heavy line with the OI Experimental, the tier 5 and it's a little bit smaller than the Kaiju and the OIs that you'll have been used to seeing by now and it's uh, surprisingly quick in a straight line actually it did surprise me how fast this was I've been driving the Kaiju and I was expecting this to be just as slow and it, it wasn't and it was quite nice and pleasant now armor values you're looking at 75 on the front 70 on the sides and 70 on the rear and your turret is a nice 75 mil all round which means that you've not quite got as much armor as the OI at tier 6 but again if you can keep this at sort of medium range as backup or if you're top tier against lower tier tanks you can bounce quite a few shots off the front but we'll look at the actual armor figures shortly now You've got a choice of guns on this. Your stock gun is a 12 centimeter short barrel, which is essentially a howitzer. And you're looking at 60 damage on your standard rounds. You put your armor piercing with 300, uh, sorry, 60 penetration, 360 damage, 140 on your premium with again 360, but also 60 penetration on your high explosive with 440 damage. And you've got 5.7 rounds a minute, 2.9 accurate uh, aiming time and 0.54 accuracy it's like a little baby tier 5 kb2 and i found that gun quite enjoyable and quite good fun although sometimes it was a little bit frustrating especially in tier 7 matches when you're having to sling premium ammunition just to well just to do anything um your stock traverse is quite poor though at 20 degrees and your turret traverse isn't much better at 22 but your view range at 360 stock isn't too bad signal range is awful at 300 though your next gun is a 7.5 centimeter tank gun which is well just a little bit better than the one that you get on the type 95 and my recommendation is don't put it on just ignore it uh, grind out enough to unlock it stick with the 12 centimeter until you can either put the 12 centimeter on or you can put this 7.5 centimeter tank gun type 5 now this one uh, at this level gets 16 rounds a minute well 16.2 124 pen 125 damage very similar to the m1a1 or the m1a2 from the shermans but a little bit more damage 155 on your premium 38 and 175 for your high explosive 2.3 second aiming time and 0.39 accuracy or you have the choice of the 10 centimeter which is six rounds a minute 130 penetration with 300 damage 150 on your premium again 300 53 and 360 for your high explosive with a 2.8 second aiming time and 0.41 accuracy which isn't that bad to be honest it's very comparable almost to the T90 uh, T29's gun but with uh, just a little bit less damage and well quite a bit less penetration but then when you get it fully upgraded I think nope stays at the same yeah that gun is a different one I'm thinking of but that one does stay at the same rate of fire and what have you which is not actually a bad gun to be honest it really isn't a, I put it on to get a replay of it uh, to show you how it works and I actually found it quite enjoyable now your engine power does go up an extra 100 horsepower which does make a tiny amount of difference when you're going uphill but not too much and your traverse goes up to 22 and your turret traverse does stay at 22 uh, view range I think stays at 360 yeah it does because obviously it's the same turret signal range does go up slightly to 425 but is generally still quite poor now shell costs well this is 10 centimeter 250 for your standard 3600 for your premium armor piercing and 185 for your high explosives now i think the other ones are cheaper but i shall just check for you i'm not going to bother with that one because like i say it's not really worth it uh, they are quite cheap for the 12 centimeter as well but let's just have a look this is seven and a half so you're looking at 82 2860 and let's put this one back on the 12 centimeter and you're looking at 130 4800 which is quite expensive and 240 but i would recommend basically just using he with the 12 centimeter gun now let me just pop those back on and then we'll look at the modules right you've got a reload time and again this is with the 10 centimeter so in fact i might even just leave that out but it's uh it does change with the different guns anyway but you've you've got an idea of the rate of fire now concealment awful as you'd expect it's massive uh, it's 
0 0.04 for stationary and 0 0.02 moving. Now, your engine, like I say, it, it's quick in a straight line. It struggles going uphill, but you've got a 40 km an hour top speed, which was a very pleasant surprise, with a power to weight ratio of 12.04, which was bigger than I thought. Uh, and a reverse speed of 12 kilometers now, which is a little poor, to be honest. Uh, obviously, you've got your gun up top. Tracks, again, with quite a few gaps through them, but generally, yeah, well, either go through that point or go through that taller bit that sticks up just above the tracks, if you get it from the side. Turret on top, radio just at the front there. Ammunition just in the collars, uh, well, the shoulders of the hull, if you will and also just underneath down into the actual hull itself so you can hit those quite easily through the actual tracks if you well if you're close enough i would have said or even if you're lucky enough if you're far away but again why go for those when you could just go for the ones just above it now crewman you've got three sat up in the turret and then you've got three in the front one in each turret and the driver bang in the middle as well nobody in the back on this one though and armour, like we say, it was 75 on the front, 70 sides and rear, but we'll have a look at it properly. Where you've got the turret ring, or what appears to be the inside of it, which is quite thin. The top decks, which again are always quite thin, as we know they're 21 to 30. Artillery love these things. Now, this is where it gets a bit more interesting. 31 to 50 along the sides, you've actually got two layers of armour if you look. You've got the inner hull and you've got the outer skirt, and you've got the tracks in between which is why you want to go for that upper part of the hull if you can which is just a basic 70 millimeters and across the back as well it's 70 millimeters now that back part is angled more than its sort of counterpart on the front so if you do get the back because you're having to shoot up i probably wouldn't go for that bit i'd probably try and go for the actual butt of the thing itself if you see what i mean and then on the front you've got your 75 all around your turret, which is just an even 75. All around the mini turrets is also a 75. That flatter part just underneath the turret there on the front, that's 75. And then your upper and lower plate are also the same. So it's not badly armoured, and again at medium range, bit of angling, you can bounce a few shots. At long range, definitely when you're top tier you can bounce a few shots. You do have to be more careful when you're not top tier though because generally you're not going to be mounting many shots so don't come afoul of that and play it cautiously especially in tier 7 matches until you basically get used to what you can take what you can do but you are quite a tall machine and this one does have quite good gun depression even over the mini turrets its gun depression is quite nice now it may struggle if something gets right up alongside it that's really low profile especially something like an ELC that could pull up alongside and basically just fire into the side of it and I very much doubt that this would be able to get its gun down to actually shoot at it so again do bear things like that in mind equipment wise I went for a gun rammer I went for the gun lane drive and vents and I basically ran this with a 10 centimeter gun um, that was my sort of gun of choice but again I've given you all three options um, I'm discounting the seven to be honest but I've given you the other options so you can see what you actually want to run it with skills wise if you were keeping it again pretty much standard heavy tank stuff you slower heavy tank stuff so you want um, repairs maybe then swap it out for six cents repairs track mechanic uh, possibly things like clutch braking on this maybe off-road driving Possibly even the, is it controlled impact, the one for extra ramming damage, you want a big heavy tank and you can pick up some good speed going downhill. And you can pick up, like I say, you get up to 35, 40 on a good flat as well, so the ramming one might be a good idea for skills. But anyway, enough of me rambling on, let's get into the replays. I've got one with the 12cm, one with the 7.5 and one with the 10cm, just show you how each gun handles on this machine. Right, so here we are for the first of the replays, and this is with the 12cm gun, and it's on Serene Coast, it's a standard battle, and it's a tier 5 match, and I've just noticed that in fact all the replays are tier 5 matches, and I just didn't quite realise until I've come to edit it together, which is, well it's a li little bit of a shame, because I would have liked to have shown you this, um, you know, in a tier 6 or 7 match possibly, um, but at least you'll get an idea of how the guns handle and what you can actually do with them. 
So I do apologise that they're all tier 5, but, you know, that's how it's gone, I'm afraid. And uh, I don't quite know what this guy's doing in the little German tank. Is it a Lux? Possibly. Um, or is it one of the Panzers? I can't quite remember which one it is. But I've no idea what he's actually doing, but he seems intent on either getting my attention or trying to troll me in some way or another. Now, I'm not quite sure. Maybe he's seen my videos and doesn't like them. But anyway, uh, I thought it was quite amusing when he parked his tank in front of mine to try and stop me. I'm in a 100 ton tank. He's in a tank that probably weighs maybe 20 tons if he's lucky. Um, so, yeah, it didn't go particularly well and I just ended up pushing him out of the way. And he does follow me and then all of a sudden he, he just decides to stop trying to troll me or whatever he was trying to do. Uh, and join in on the fight. Like I say, it could, be, uh, it could have been one of my subscribers trying to get my attention, but I, I am sorry. I'm not very good with names at the best of times. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I think he was trying to give me a push there. Well, it wouldn't really make much difference, but A for effort at least. And, um, like I say, I'm not very good with names at the best of times, so a lot of the time I won't recognise a name. Panzer 1C, that's it, not looks. I'm afraid, or like I say, could have just seen my videos and not liked them. <laughs> we'll never know. Right. So, we've got a T-34. We had a T-34 up here. And now you'll notice that I'm just firing high explosive. And with a 12cm gun, that's all I did. I've got five armor piercing and five heat rounds. And the heat rounds are for the times when I do get into a tier 7 match. Or when I did get into a tier 7 match with this gun. And uh, you're up against something particularly heavily armoured. Because the armour takes away from the high explosive splash damage, you see. So they did come in useful every now and again. But I think I only ever used a couple of them. From uh, if I can remember right. So, SU-85. Wait for the horrible aiming time. And that one didn't seem to penetrate, but it still did a good amount of damage. And you'll see what I mean. It, it does remind me of, like, a, a baby KV-2 gun, something like that. One more hit should do it, if I can hit him. And there we go. He's done for, and now we've got the T-56 GMC, is it? Yep. Little tier 3 American tank destroyer up there. And, uh, T-40 across there. Panzer 1C is still behind me. Now, it is, you know, it's fairly quick in a straight line. It's not got the best terrain resistances. Though they are, uh, you know, it does seem to slow down a lot over sort of wet terrain and what have you, which is understandable. It's a, it's a big, heavy tank. So I think what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do anyway, is go and sit in cap, possibly, and try and draw some back. And see if we can do something that way. Oh, the T-56 has gone around behind us, and he didn't even get a chance to shoot. And when this thing does penetrate, when you're in a match like this and you're top tier, this gun can just wreck things. And like I say, there is a lot that you'll bounce when you're in a, a match like this and you are top tier. And that's it. All of a sudden, there's no tanks left. And the match is over. That even took me by surprise then, I think. As well as it did during the match. Not tons of damage done. Um... Not the best match I've ever played in it. You know, I, these are matches that I went back and I basically stuck each gun on the tank, played a match in it to show you how each gun performs and how it sort of kind of changes the role of the tank slightly. Um, it doesn't change it, you know, completely obviously because you, you've still got the same armour, that sort of thing, but it, it does change the way that it plays slightly. Like I say, not the best round, not the worst, but it gives you an idea of what you're going to be dealing with with the 12cm gun. Now, this one again, another tier 5 match. Great wall, uh, standard battle again, and this is with the 7.5cm type 
I would say 95 or 99. It's the better of the 7.5 centimeters. I know I did cock up in the garage and keep referring to the other one as the 7 centimeter, but it's not. Um, I think it's the 7 centimeter type 3 or something, and this is this might be the type 5. I could, there's that many different codes and names for them it, and designations. I've just got a little bit confused, but this is the better of the 7.5 centimeters. This is the other option for a top gun on this. And I believe it's the gun off the... I want to say off the Chi Nu. Although I could be slightly wrong with that one. But anyway, it's the alternate top gun. You can have this, or you can have the 10cm. Now I'm going to work my way down the back. Well, what I call the back. It's the western side of Great Wall. I think a lot of people call it the back. Uh, and consider the part with the village the front. But I could be wrong. You might think it's the other way around. Anyway, I'm going to pop down this way because there's normally a decent push from both teams around this corner. Usually the heavies is what you'll find will come this way and the mediums and some of the tank destroyers will generally go through the village uh, up and around the hill on the uh, northeastern side there. Around B0, that sort of area. Anything with good gun depression can do well up there normally. Especially if there's uh, obviously the enemies coming the other way. There's a couple of good ridges you can work that way. I'm going to go for the front of the T1 Heavy. I bounce, unfortunately he doesn't. And he doesn't again, and I did. So I'm going to aim a little bit better, but I've still got to be careful because he's just penned again. Managed to dodge that shot now. And it's surprisingly nimble for nipping in and out like this, as you can see. Oh, that was a poor unfortunate M3 Lee. I don't think he was expecting that. I know I certainly wasn't. And I managed to get rid of the T1 Heavy. Although, in doing so, it has cost me just over half my health. Which is not a particularly good exchange at this stage of the game. Now I'm going to sneak. Yes, that's right. In a 100 ton massive tank. Sneak round on this M4. I'm going to put a few shots into him and see if we can finish him off. No, he's disappeared. So I'll turn my attention to the KV-1S instead, who, again, has either not noticed me or is choosing to ignore me and focus on the guys on the other side of that ridge. And that's when I notice a T-67 on my uh, flank. But again, he didn't notice me. And somebody else manages to take him out. It looks like a T1 Heavy is pushed up and over around the back there, up over that slightly bigger hill to my right. Track him. I need to aim better at the front of a T1 Heavy, especially at range. And that one goes through, but again, it cost me quite a bit of health. Not a particularly good game tactics-wise, I must admit, looking back at this. But again, it shows you how this gun performs. And I wasn't going to bother with this gun at all on this tank. And I was really pleasantly surprised by it. It's got a good rate of fire. It's got decent penetration. It's got decent sort of uh, alpha damage as well. But it it is a medium tank gun. But it does kind of work on this. And it, like I say, it reminds me a lot of the guns on the Sherman, but I think this has got slightly higher alpha damage. Possibly slightly higher pen, I can't quite remember now off the top of my head. But it, it's not a bad gun. But like I say, I'm going to say it again, because I, I just sort of can't emphasise it enough. I really wouldn't bother with the first of the 75 centimeters that you can get on this. Because it, it just, it's a frustrating gun. It really is. Um, the 12 centimeter is good fun. This 7.5 centimeter, which is the second one, is quite a good gun. And the 10 centimeter is good as well. It really packs a punch with uh, 300 average damage. But it's just got a slightly slow rate of fire. And one of the friendlies takes a couple of shots at us. We've got two lights and a medium left. And again, in a tank like this, I didn't really want to go chasing them all over the map. And I thought, to be honest, with, with this capping, they might actually 
turn around and come back and try and reset the cap. But looking at it again, one of them's been taken out, one of the light tanks. There's a medium up near our base, there's a light tank unaccounted for. And it's at that point that I'll leave the cap. One, to, to buy the guys out of the cap a bit more time to go after them. And two, because I did actually change my mind and decide to try and find that light tank. Wondered if he was hiding around near here somewhere. And I was kind of hoping that a couple of the others in the cap would follow suit and just leave one person in their cap in. But hey ho. It wasn't to be that time. Now again, not a bad match. Not a brilliant one, but not a bad one. Got a high caliber out of it and a sniper. Uh, four kills and just over 1400 damage. So nothing to sniff at. And like I say, that, that gun was a very pleasant surprise to me. I wasn't going to bother with it. Um, but I did like it, but it does kind of change how the tank plays a bit more. You kind of feel like you have to stay a little bit more exposed to actually get the damage done, whereas with a 10 centimeter, you can sort of play peak boom, you can pop out, put a big 300 damage hit into something, and get back into cover while you reload. And the rate of fire on the 10 centimeter isn't too bad. I mean, it's, it's not brilliant, but it's not too bad. I mean, especially for having such a big gun on a what is a fairly low tier vehicle at tier 5 anyway uh, last of the replays for you and it, of course it is with the 10 centimeter gun it's on uh, High Elbron the new map and yet again tier 5 match I do apologize and it's a, a standard battle now did you see the British tank destroyer just zip past me there the archer I think it is little tip for you anybody who's going through that line or has got the archer drive it backwards if you actually look at it in the garage and uh, put the camera above it the driver's seat is facing towards the rear of the vehicle the long part is the front of the vehicle it does remind me of something like an e-type jaguar actually for the looks of it it does look quite funny um, but it's very slow going forwards which is the the way that the gun faces but it does a, i think it's about 12 or 18 kilometers something it's quite slow anyway but if you flip it round and drive it backwards, I'm sure it does about 30 odd kilometres an hour. And it is designed to be driven backwards. I think there's a, a British artillery that's the same. I can't quite remember which one it is though. I think it's the one after Bert. But I can never remember the name. But yeah, like I say, quick tip for the Archer. Drive it backwards. It is much faster. And like I say, you can actually see the driver's seat in there facing the back of the vehicle. And it's good for if you're on a ridge, you're shooting, you get spotted, you can pull back very quickly. Anyway, enough about the Archer, we're on about the OI Experimental. So I've popped down into town, I don't know if this is the best place for an OI to be honest, I mean it's a big vehicle, you can block up the streets but I find that these aren't very good at side scraping because as you pull back you expose that sort of shoulder of the hull where your ammo rack is and it's because it's quite flat it's one of the easiest places to pen one of these from the front and it's the same on the uh, OI at tier 6 I'm assuming it's going to be something similar on the Oni is it at tier 7 but from the front that is one of the easiest places to pen these because it is flatter so even though it's still 75 mil of armor or 150 on the OI if you've got a gun that does you know sort of over that penetration that's the flattest part easiest place to pen or if it is angled if you look at the mini turrets again even though they are the full thickness of the armor they are flat sided so if one of these is angled and you can't quite get through the front or those shoulder parts the flat a bit just below the turret if you've got a good aim uh, good aim if you've got a fairly accurate gun or you know if you're close enough go for the flatter sides on the mini turrets because then it is just a straight 75 mil rather than you know incorporating the angle which increases the effective thickness now I wasn't quite in time to save my teammate there I don't think but I did pop around the corner and give that was it a type T34 a nasty surprise now, I took a hit from a distance but it bounced now the Sherman 3 he may be able to pen me, and that one went slightly high and bounced off his turret. Something's tracked me, and Art is paying attention. 
Got a good hit on the Sherman 3, and you can just see that damage that this 10 centimeter can do. And he derps into a wall, and that's just cost him his tank. Now, when artillery are in play, do be careful in one of these. I've actually got a replay for my next World of Fails video. Where I'm in this, having a decent start to the match, I am on full health, and I get hit by a gorilla, I think it is, a gorilla. Um, and it must hit the top deck, and it penned and did full damage, and one-shotted me. Which was funny and frustrating all at the same time. But yeah, do be very wary of artillery in these. Because if they can pen, like if they can hit your top deck and it pens, you're going to be in a world of pain. Now I managed to get a good hit on the Panzer IV, which nearly, well, I'd say took off at least two-thirds of his health. Got rid of artillery, because they are your enemy. And now I'm going to go back after that Panzer IV H. See if I can't finish him off. Scores are not looking too clever in our favour at the minute. It's 8-11 in the enemy team's favour. Now I'm going to attempt, again, to sneak up on this Panzer IV. Nothing's gone off, saying I'm detected, but... I doesn't mean I'm not, it just means that they're not looking at me. And I don't think I've got sixth sense on this at this point. In fact, I'm pretty sure I haven't. But get round and take him by surprise. And ammo rack him and pop his turret. And it's always nice to ammo rack somebody and pop the turret, although it is a little bit disappointing when they're not on full health. It's always so much more satisfying when you manage to ammo rack them from full health. It's just funny, although not so much when it happens to you. Um, but you've got to take the rough with the smooth anyway. Right, what we got left? Uh, the scores have evened up slightly. It's now 10-12 in the enemy's favour. We could still pull it back from this. There's me, there's a tank destroyer and another heavy. Can I get that Chinu? I can, but that KV-1 got a hit on me and knocked my radio man out. Anybody ever heal the radio man? I know I don't. I don't think I ever have. Not since I first started playing the game. Right, so we've got an enemy T-67. And he's just giving me a bit of a beating. And there's the KV-1. I need to try somehow and get into cover so only one of these guys can actually shoot at me. And that's what you've got to try and do. Limit it so only one tank can shoot back. I mean, obviously it's better if nobody can shoot back at you. But if somebody's going to shoot back at you, just try and make it one tank. Now I have a feeling that T-67 is going to pop out. I'm pretty safe from the KV-1. And I could possibly... No, I don't think I could one-shot him, not even potentially. There he is, and not quite enough. That was a high roll, though. I didn't think I'd one-shot him, but the T-67 had me in the end. So let's skip to the end and actually see how we did. And that one was a victory. Our friendly T-67 actually managed to finish off the KV-1. I can't remember who killed the uh, enemy T-67, but our friendly killed the KV-1. But 1,891 damage done. Not a bad round. Not the most damage I've done with that gun, but decent enough uh, to show you, you know, how it handles. So, I hope it's been helpful for you. Uh, I hope you've been entertained as well and you find this review useful. And I'll be back tomorrow with a Boilermaker review, the new premium Firefly. So as always, take care out there and I'll catch you next time. See you later.